So today, I want to talk a little bit about working with your feminine energy, working with your feminine flow. In last week's episode, which we're kind of experiencing a beautiful transition from talking about one of my programs, Love After Loss, to talking about the I Can and I Should course, I really, a part of me really wanted to talk about visual vamp up. And so I kind of have been battling between the two, but I'm pretty sure we're going to talk about I can and I should, because really a lot of this is going to be focusing on self-esteem, believing in ourselves. And then afterwards we'll talk about visual vamp up, which is another goal setting course. That's a lot more focused on spiritual principles. So, okay. I'm pretty sure that's the plan. (laughs) Hello, my name is Natalie Hughes and thank you so much for coming to me. Come. (laughs) Thank you so much for participating in today's marketing meeting between me and my team. (laughs) Okay. So today's episode, actually, this is a great place to do an intro. I'm really good at my job and I know exactly what we're going to be talking about today. My name is Natalie Hughes. I'm a life mindset and manifestation coach on my platform and in my business. I teach ambitious women, professional women, how to create emotionally fulfilled, purpose-driven lives. So in my work, I'm helping you to get the standing, the prestige in your industry, especially if you're a trailblazer, which, you know, hint every single woman listening to this is. And then we also talk about romance. We talk about soulmates. We talk about family and we talk about money and we talk about lifestyle. So we talk about all of the aspects of life, right? Relationships, money, finances, career, self-respect, self-esteem, self-worth. I'm really hating this intro, but we're going to keep it going because I don't feel like re-recording it and I'm going with my own flow. And criticism is just a killer of feminine energy and it's a killer of creativity and we don't have time for it, especially not during this phase of my cycle. Okay, so in last week's episode, we started talking about cycles. We started talking about, we were talking about the four um, phases of the menstrual cycle, which I don't even think that is an appropriate, um, I don't know that that's an appropriate term to use. Okay, I've learned a little bit more. My brain is in a really good place right here in my mind. So here's what I need you to understand based on today's conversation that we will be having, okay? First things first, there's an ovarian cycle and there's a uterine cycle. So the ovarian cycle, your ovaries, that's where your eggs are housed, that's where they're matured, that's where they're released, and then from your ovaries, they travel down your fallopian tubes, and they go into your uterus, they settle onto the lining of your uterus, and then they wait there to be fertilized. And if the egg is not fertilized, then the egg plus the lining, the endo, mm, endo, endo, it's not endometriosis. It's not, that's not the right word. Um, the innermost lining of your uterus gets shed, right? And that's your period. That's when you bleed, right? Okay. That's what you need to understand. So there's an ovarian cycle. And when people talk about cycle sinking, they usually say four phases. There's the menstruation, there's the follicular phase, there's ovulation, and there's the luteal phase. And your period is technically something, the menstruation part, is technically something that's happening during the follicular phase. But I think that the reason why they include period into that is so that we can understand because the follicular phase is happening for a period, at, for a period, oh my God. <laughs> 
I think I described that well enough. Let me just repeat what I've just said. So there's an ovarian cycle and then there's a uterine cycle. Your ovaries are where the eggs are housed, where they're becoming more mature and they're being released to be fertilized. Your uterus is everything that's holding it it's holding the egg and that's the thing that sheds when you are not pregnant or when you become pregnant your uterus is the thing that grows and expands and expands the baby and all of that good stuff right so we're all on the same page the reason why this is relevant is because in the last episode we were talking about the different phases of the menstrual cycle and how you, us being women, it just puts us in this position where we are more sensitive, where we are more, I don't know if sensitive is the best word to use. And I don't want to say, I want to be very mindful of the words that I use because a part of me wants to say fragile, but I don't want to say weak. There's a sensitivity and there's a natural flow to who we are as women and our body's cycles. As we're moving through these phases, as you're moving through the follicular phase, as you're moving through ovulation, as you're moving through the luteal phase, there's different things that are going on in your body. There's different things that are going on in your hormones and your body is responding to these different things that are going on in a lot of different ways with like mood and different things like that. If you're somebody like me who experiences chronic illness, then depending on different parts of my phase, my chronic illness will flare up more because of the different things that are going on with my hormones in my body. So it's really important to understand your body. It's really important to understand what part of your cycle that you're moving through and how your personal body is responding to those those hormones. And the phases and all of that stuff that I am describing, they're not, nothing about the menstrual cycle, nothing about being a woman is cut and dry. First you do this and then you do this and then you do this and then you do this, right? And we know that this is true. There are some women who have a period for three days. There are some women who have a period for five. There are some women who have a period for eight. I believe in one of the articles I read, eight was like the highest number that I saw. But the point is that there is a range. There's a range in things like the length of your period. There's a range in things like the length of your follicular phase, ovulation, luteal, so on and so forth, right? And what the point that I'm making with all of this, because we are talking about our goals and in today's episode, I'm talking to you about how to, how I would utilize my cycle in terms of my mindset work, my manifestation work, my goal setting work, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about hacking your cycle to understand how to go after your goals. And the reason why we're talking about this is because I saw a tweet and it really pissed me off and I thought it was very stupid. And the tweet, it was nothing outrageous. The tweet was just like, um, lock in with your goals, be very disciplined with yourself. And like, you know, it's like, it's nothing bad. It's nothing wrong. And it's not like I haven't subscribed to those beliefs at one point in time. But when you know better, you do better. And I'm at a place where I'm knowing better. I'm understanding better as a woman, as a woman in her feminine energy. And some people do not thrive under that hard routine and structure. There are some people that do. There are some people that don't. There are certain times and phases of your menstrual cycle that you're going to really be able to lock in. And there are other times that you're not. And we talked about that in um, last week's episode, the, the episode right before this, I was totally having just a moment emotionally. It's been very emotional past couple of days for me. It's been a very emotional cycle for me. It's fucking cancer season, full moon. It's been, there's a lot that's going on. Okay. With me, with the sky energetically, it's, it's an emotional fucking time, but that's the point not the emotions, the fluctuation, the movement, the flow, 
the changes that are going on, right? Last week, I was looking at this chart, the same chart that I'm looking at today. I was looking at it last week. And when I looked at that chart last week, I didn't fucking understand. I didn't understand a goddamn thing. I was looking at that chart and I'm like, none of this is really making any sense to me. But I'm looking at this chart today and I'm like, oh, this makes complete and total sense. This is so easy and obvious to me. Now, my period hasn't even started yet. So I am really, really, really at the end of my luteal phase, probably at the beginning of my follicular phase because my period is coming like any second now. I kind of have those, you know, when you kind of have like those like warning cramps, your uterus starts to feel a little bit like heavier in your body. If you're a woman like me and you're really like sensitive to what's going on in your physical body, you can just like feel that difference. Like, okay, my period is coming. And then there was the full moon. So like, it's really coming. You know what I mean? So anyway, what's my point? My point is that there's all of these changes and shifts that are happening within our bodies all of the time because we're women, period. And like, no pun intended. <laughs> there, there are all of these changes that are happening in our bodies and with our hormones all of the time. In astrology, the moon represents women. Venus also represents women. But if we're going to look at the moon, the moon is ruled by cancer. Cancer is the mother, the nurturer. If we're going to talk about, right, moon cycles, your period is called a moon cycle, depending on what circles you're in and who you're talking to. So it's like, you know, you may or may not have a period that syncs up with the full moon or the new moon and all of these different things in the world. And what's my point? The point is that your body is very much connected to or represented by the moon in astrology. And the moon as a planet, even though we know that the moon is not a planet scientifically, but in astrology, the moon as a planet is something that is constantly changing signs. So I really do not, we do not need to get into a whole astrology breakdown. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then let it go in one ear and out the other. And I hope that I'm explaining it perfectly and wonderfully. So in astrology, there are planets and there are signs. The planets move throughout the sky. And as the planets move throughout the sky, the planets move through different signs. When we have Pisces season, then the sun, the planet is moving through the sign of Pisces. You understand right now it's cancer season. That that means the sun is moving through the sign of cancer. Ta-da! Different planets are going to move at different rates of speed. So you have a sign, I mean, you have a planet like the sun, which takes about a month to move through the signs. And so we have cancer season for like a month, right? The moon is very different from the sun. The sun, which is going to take, let's say, like a month to move through a sign, is much different from the moon, which the moon is going to move through signs every two days. The moon is going to move through signs every two days. So the moon is in Sagittarius one day and then it's in Capricorn the next. And before it has time to really settle into that Capricorn energy, it's moving into Aquarius. The moon moves very quickly and these different signs with their different energies, their different attributes, their different ways of showing up in the world. When you're interacting with somebody who is a cancer, you're going to get a different version of them depending on the day, depending on the time of day, right? Cancers are notoriously quote unquote moody people because they're planet ruler the moon is an energy it's a planet that moves through signs very quickly are you following me i'm sure that you are so if the moon is what's representing us as women then the moon is something that is constantly changing and we know this because the moon's phases are always changing blah 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 so the moon is always 
changing. The moon is always in a different energy. The moon is always doing a different thing. The moon is always focusing on a different thing. And that is what the moon does. That is the moon's function. If you were to go up to the moon and you were to tell the moon that in order to reach the moon's goals, then the moon needed to move into the sign of Virgo or the sign of Capricorn or the sign, I'm tired of naming signs. If you were to go to the moon and tell the moon that the moon could not be successful unless it got locked in and it tapped into the energy of Capricorn and it did not move from the spot, then the moon would explode. The moon would not be able to survive. The moon would not like that. That's not the moon's function. That's not what the moon is. That's not what the moon does. And I'm going into this kind of deeply because you're the moon. You're not made to be locked into something and focused on something. If we were men in astrology, maybe men would be the sun. I'm thinking men could also be Saturn. That, sure, let's say that men are the sun. If men are the sun, then the sun isn't a sign for a month. The sun can lock in for a month. The sun can lock in for a longer period of time. The moon's function, what the moon was created to do is move through signs quickly. Move through things quickly. That's not necessarily being disorganized. That's not necessarily not having structure, but the structure of the moon is much different than the structure of the sun. The function of the moon is much different than the function of the sun. The sun is masculine energy. The moon is feminine energy. And so the moon's structure looks different. You're going to get a new moon. And then two weeks later, you're going to get a full moon. And then two weeks later, you're going to get a new moon. And then two weeks later, you're going to get a full moon. And then two weeks later, you're going to get a new moon. And then two weeks later, you're going to get a full moon. And like, that's the moon cycle. That's the moon cycle. And you're going to get different signs for every full and new moon until it's the following year. So for example, well, technically this month, there are two full moons in Capricorn, but let's pretend that there isn't, right? If we just had a Capricorn full moon, then just for argument's sake, we would not have another full Capricorn moon until one year from now. But we could count on that. We could anticipate that. We can calculate that. We can know that. So the moon might be something that's constantly growing and expanding and fluctuating and changing, but there is a structure. But the moon is feminine energy. The moon represents flow. And I am talking about this in depth because you're the moon. You have to understand that the moon has a different function. The moon has a different purpose. The moon has a different way of being. And the moon is still incredibly effective. The moon is still incredibly powerful. The moon is still something that's totally worthy of respect. But it's sensitive. It's constantly changing, moving into a new energy, embodying a new state. And then it's moving again. So as women, we have these phases that we're moving through. And it's not that we're completely unpredictable. Like you don't know what phase you're going to go into. Of course, there are different things like PCOS and, you know, different um, different variations that can happen in our body. But I'm just talking about... Um, um, I'm trying to think of what to say. I am talking about the basic standard. Not better or worse, whatever. I'm talking about the basic standard, okay? In your basic standard, you know what to expect. You know what's going on. I'm going to have my period. My follicular phase is going to continue. 
I'm going to ovulate, I'm going to experience my luteal phase, and then I'm going to have my period, and then my follicular phase is going to continue, and then I'm going to ovulate, and then I'm going to have my luteal phase, and that's what's going to happen. I get it, and I understand it. There is structure, but that structure looks different than the structure for a man. You want structure, but you your structure does not look like a man's structure. Your structure does not look like lock in every single day. You must lock in every single day. You must lock in every single day. That's not what your structure looks like. Now, this is the part where we start like getting into the nuances and stuff, right? So no, hold on. I think I'm going to leave that. I'm going to leave that for a little bit later and let me just finish saying what I'm talking about now. So how does this relate to our goals at different times of the month? Now, I'm going to be talking about like mindset work and the kind of mindset work that I would be doing during certain times of the month or certain times of the ovarian cycle or certain times of the menstrual cycle. And you can apply this to things like going to the gym or whatever. But I'm talking about my manifestation routine, my mindset routine. What am I doing at different times of the month? And this is just based off of my own natural observation because I have been kind of observing myself over the past month or over this past cycle that I've been in, even though I did not know that that's what I was doing, but I I have been doing it. Okay. Anyway, so we'll start with your period, the beginning of your follicular phase. So when it's your period, you don't have as much energy. This is a time for rest. This is a time for chillaxing. This is a time for not doing much when it's my period or when it's my luteal phase which is the one right before your period when I'm having those moments and I'm having that downtime and my energy levels are dropping and I feel probably a lot more moody and just a lot more just emotionally sensitive than any other part of my menstrual cycle when I'm having that moment and when I'm having that time I need to prioritize rest I need to prioritize going with my flow there are some times when I wake up and the idea of doing work absolutely disgusts me if I wake up and the idea of doing work absolutely disgusts me I will not touch my work this is my time for resting this is my time for rejuvenating this is my time I don't have on socks right now do not tell anyone (laughs) do not tell the menstrual police but this is a time in my life where I probably want to have socks on I probably I'm gonna have a blanket around me I'm probably gonna be spending more time wrapped up in blankets I probably want ice cream I probably want every single food known to man I probably have some of the craziest cravings you've ever heard of in your fucking life like this this is my time Okay, this is my time where I'm not locked in. I'm locked out. I'm locked out of my brain. It's not working at full capacity right now. And that's okay. So I'm not doing a goddamn thing. I'm going to lay on the couch. I'm going to watch Twilight. I'm going to watch Charmed. I'm going to watch some Gilmore Girls. I'm going to cry at a movie if it moves me to tears. And I'm going to just be in my element. I'm going to feel that, right? So how does going after my goals work in alignment with these cycles? I said that I was starting with the period, but... I'm right now I'm in my luteal phase and I want to give you a current real life example, right? But how I would behave in my luteal phase and how I would behave during my period, they're very similar. So, okay. I just in my journal yesterday. Let me get it. One I'm counting the pages that I wrote. 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 and a half. Yesterday, I journaled 12 and a half pages of intention setting and scripting. But I did not sit down at the computer with the intention to journal out 12 pages. I did not sit down at the computer at my desk in my office with the intention to write like I'm running out of time. 
I wrote 12 and a half pages because that's what flowed out of me. I was really in the zone. I was really feeling inspired. And I sat down and I know that there are certain things that I like to do. So when it comes to your mindset work, when it comes to your energetic work, when it comes to your manifestation work, there are certain exercises that I really like to do that I really enjoy doing. And those things change. Why? Because I'm a woman. Moon, moon phases, right? So there were there was a time where I was really obsessed with meditation. Now, I like a short meditation. I like a five, six, seven, eight minute meditation. I like a meditation. I can get in. I can sit down for only a couple minutes. I can get some shifts. I can get some insight. And then I can get the fuck ASAP because I'm not somebody who really likes to sit for a 20 minute long meditation. I'll do it and I'll enjoy it. But it's not something that I really, really am seeking out. There are other times when I can sit, put on some healing frequencies, close my eyes and meditate for 40 minutes, an hour, so on and so forth. I can do that when I feel moved to do that. And I'm really just chopping it up with the angels and the ancestors in the astral realm, right? But those are happening during different times in my life. And it's not so much a specific time of my cycle because I haven't observed that. Otherwise, I would tell you. But it just depends on what I'm really into, right? So there's a time when I'm really into my meditations. I want to meditate today. I want to get into that today. I want to do that today. There's another time when I'm really into scripting. I'm really into journaling. I'm really into writing things out. And that's what I'm in right now. So when I do my journaling, there's a specific time during my cycle, during my menstrual cycle, where I can sit and I can bust out an entire workshop. I want to do everything. I want to, I want to open up this workshop from the next level mindset mentorship program that I have and I want to press play and from start to finish I'm going to answer every single question as a part of this workshop I'm going to shift my energy I'm going to feel so good I might do some breath work right that's a little bit more intensive that's requiring a little bit more of my focus that's something that I can do every single day consistently when I'm in my follicular phase so after my period has ended and I feel on top of the world and I'm feeling just a lot more vibrant. I'm feeling a lot more alive. I'm feeling a lot more available to be locked in. I'm starting to want to exercise more. There are times when I'll get to the end of my period. And by the time that I get to the end of my period, it's like I am done treating myself like, you know, an uncooked egg and I need to get out there and I need to move my body and I need to take action. So it's like I feel that cycle changing within me. I feel that energy shifting within me where it's like okay now it's time to put things into motion this is the time when I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna do that workshop and I'm gonna bring up all of the things that happened in my childhood experience I'm gonna uncover it I'm going to debunk that bullshit I'm gonna expand my mindset I'm gonna empower my mindset I'm gonna go through my different workshops I'm gonna go through my different journals I'm listening to this course I'm listening to this course I got a course on while I'm going for a walk I got a course playing while I'm swimming in the pool, whatever. You understand what I'm saying? Like, that's me peak follicular phase, ovulation phase, where I'm ready to fucking go. I'm all in. I can be locked in. I can show up every single day. Now, even when I'm showing up every single day, I am still in my own flow. And this is not as structured as I wanted it to be but that's okay because it's all making sense and it kind of fits perfectly with our theme here so my daily routine is not necessarily as structured as I want it to be and that's okay because sometimes I need something different sometimes I need to hear what Amanda Francis has to say sometimes I need to open up my own courses and programs to hear what I have to say and that gives me a boost of self-esteem because every single time I open up one of my own programs and I'm 
I'm doing the work or I'm reading something, I get so fucking inspired. I start having these epiphanies and shifting energy and I start going, God damn, this bitch is good. She is amazing. She's taking it. And the more that I feel good about my work, then of course, the easier it is for me to do well in business. I have more confidence in myself, more belief in myself. So there's different things that I need from day to day in my business. And based on what I need that day, I'm going to decide what I want to do. I'm going to decide what's going to work for me. There are some times, some days, some weeks, some months where what I need is to wake up and meditate. There are some times and weeks where what I need is to wake up and make green juice and put on gospel music and sing and talk to God. And that has to be my morning routine. And I will not stray from that because I need that and I need that coming together and connecting with God every single morning and then there are some times where I feel like me and God are good and I wake up feeling super inspired and what I need to do is automatically jump into a program and then I'll probably do some journaling later right so it's always regardless of where I am on the menstrual cycle regardless of what phase I'm in The work that I'm doing for my mindset is going to be based on my flow, based on what lights me up, based on what excites me. And this is the part where I'm going to give you the nuance that I didn't um, choose to give to you earlier. The nuance is that everything is a choice, right? Everything is a choice. So when you think I should go for a walk today or I should journal today, And then you go, nah, I don't want to journal today. I'll journal tomorrow, right? That's a choice. For me, there's a difference between, nah, I don't really feel like journaling today right now and feeling like, no, what my body needs right now is rest. So there's a difference. At no point in any of my phases of my cycle am I avoiding my work. At no point am I running away from my pain. At no point am I avoiding showing up for myself and saying, oh, well, I just didn't feel like it. It just wasn't in my flow, right? No, that's not true. That's not real. And I'm not saying, let me say that again. Let me say that in a different way. It's not that it's not true and it's not that it's not real, but it's not you being authentic. If the moon is feminine energy and it's cancer energy, it's also the mother. So if you're tapping into your moon cycle and you're tapping into your mothering energy and who you truly are, that divine feminine essence, your divine feminine essence is going to want to take care of herself, period, point blank. Your divine feminine essence is never going to tell you, oh no, don't take a shower today oh no you don't need to brush your teeth oh no girl you don't need to you don't need to comb your hair no let's not do pilates today no let's not let's not do play today we can do it tomorrow we can do it tomorrow right that's not your divine feminine essence so the choices and decisions that i'm making on whether or not i'm going to show up it's based on what i need from moment to moment sometimes what i need is rest Sometimes what I need is rest. And so if what I need is rest, then that might mean that a podcast doesn't go out on that Monday. Right now it's 10.50 p.m. on Monday. And I don't know if by the time I'm done talking and uploading that this episode will have, you know, gotten up by the end of today. But I almost didn't do a podcast episode today. I woke up feeling exhausted and I woke up at like three o'clock in the afternoon because of my sleep schedule and full moon. But that's, 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 that's different. That's, (laughs) that's unrelated. The point is, I did not feel to sit down and record this episode. And I thought that maybe the episode might be late. I thought maybe I'll do it tomorrow because I give myself that grace because what did I need today? I needed to lay down. I couldn't even pay attention to what was going on on the TV. I was literally laying on the couch having chowder play in the background and like giving myself a freaking nap, like trying to lull myself back into sleep because it just, it has been a crazy time lately. So what's my point? My point is, if I need to rest for the day, then I'm going to rest for the day. But when it's time to take action and it's time to show up, I'm going to show up. Earlier today, I'm at the end of my luteal phase, right? Really, really, really like the period is coming now. Maybe the beginning of my follicular phase. You know what I mean? So... I'm laying on the couch and I kind of took like a short nap. My remote fell into the couch cushion weirdly. So then it like paused my TV show and I'm like, oh, I really do not need to 
I I was not in the mood to go to sleep with nothing on. I really wanted to have that playing in the background. So I was like, oh, not able to go to sleep. And then I kind of was like sitting there for a little bit. And I'm like, you know what? There's a lot of things that need to get done around the house. Why don't we get up? And the reason why I really got up was because, long story short, there's a basket in my pool that's supposed to be in one place but it was in a different place because of the whole getting a dead bird out of the pool thing and I didn't move the basket back because I was so overwhelmed and I was just like fuck this shit I quit right so the basket needed to be moved back and the lid needed to be put back on top of the basket and I didn't do it for like three days so I'm sitting on my couch and I'm going okay this is not going on for a fourth day the pool is fine the pump is on but if something that's too big falls into that little pump blah 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 then it could get into the pipe all of these different negative consequences could possibly be happening we need to get up and just put the basket back where the basket belongs it's not going to be hard it's not going to be difficult that needs to get done today it's not going a fourth day without the basket being in the proper place like period that's not happening so I'm sitting on the couch and I decide to get up and get a glove and go put the basket back boom that happens and so while I'm up I'm like okay let's take this little energy that we have from our nap and let's get the things together that need to get together the the living room needs to be cleaned up desperately and laundry needs to be done especially because my period is coming and I need to clean my underwear so (laughs) my god like literally that's my thought process so I get up and I put the clothes in the washer and then I'm thinking okay it's Monday evening do I want to do a podcast episode I didn't know what I wanted to talk to you guys about today and I was like okay god angels universe inspire me put the words in my mouth and if the words come into my mouth then I'll sit and I'll record and then I was in my room and I got that inkling to do it and show up and it felt like yes let's do it and in that moment I a part of me was like oh I really do not feel like doing this right now but I also more strongly felt let's sit down and let's record this and let's tell our people what they need to hear from us this week and it'll be quick and it'll be easy and we'll just put it out there and we'll let the rest go you know what I'm saying so it's like in that moment I could have decided no I'm not gonna do it I'm gonna rest I'm gonna do something else but that's not what I needed what I needed in that moment was to sit down and record the podcast and share what I felt had been put on my heart to share with my audience period that's what I felt that's what I needed in that moment so at no point in my cycle am I sabotaging myself or avoiding my responsibilities and not showing up but at any moment even during my ovulation phase right if I need rest I'm gonna give my body that rest I'm gonna give myself what I need from moment to moment to moment because that's what I do as a nurturer that's what I do as a divine feminine that's what I do as somebody who would be represented by the moon the mother I'm going to nurture and take care of myself. This doesn't mean that men don't take care of themselves, but when I refer to the purposes of today's episode, you understand what I'm saying. So let me run through and explain. Okay, no, hold on. Let's move on. Luteal phase. Luteal phase into period. When I'm doing my mindset manifestation work, when I get right off of ovulation and I start moving into luteal phase, I don't always feel such a dramatic like drop in my energy. So I might still be doing some things like I was still trying to roller skate every single day, but it was getting a little bit hard to get out there. And I was like more prone to falling while my luteal phase was like beginning, which is really, really interesting. So I wasn't really feeling it. I was going out, I was putting on my skates and when it's time to lace up the fucking skates, cause they go up past your goddamn ankles, you know what I mean? So it's like time to lace up the goddamn skates and that just feels like it takes so much energy and it's just like, oh my God, like today drained me, you know what I mean? So I started noticing that I was having that response to skating and it's like, okay, we're done skating for now. We will pick up the skates when it's time to pick up the skates. This is not the time. Today is not the day to be going so fucking hard physically. So 
I'm the same way with physical activity as I'm going to be with my mindset work, with my manifestation work. So luteal phase, during my luteal phase and during my period, I might not be doing dive deeping hard work to uncover my limiting beliefs. That feels like too much structure and it can start to feel suffocating to me, especially when I'm in that luteal phase on my period. When I in that luteal phase and on my period. When I am in moving through these phases in my menstrual cycle and I need more rest than trying to force myself to do mindset work and healing work, it feels like it feels unnatural to me. This is not the time for me to be locked in. And what we talked about in that last episode, feminine energy, divine feminine energy, you're going to do less and you're going to receive more. I don't have to be locked in every single day. I'm not made to be locked in every single day, especially not during this phase of my cycle when my body is telling me to rest and relax and slow down and just take a fucking chill pill, right? But I'm a woman who's ambitious. I'm a woman who cares deeply about her goals and her desires. So that looks a little bit different as I get into that luteal phase and my energy levels start to drop a little bit. And especially when I'm moving into my period and I'm really, really tired and it's just me and my heating pack against the world. You know what I mean? During those moments and times when I'm doing my writing, when I'm doing my scripting, when I'm doing anything, it might look like me going on rampages. Sometimes sitting and journaling feels hard and it feels difficult. Mindset energy work for me during the luteal phase and the period phase, it might look like me praying. It might look like me putting on gospel music and listening to the songs and singing along to the songs and talking to God, talking about what needs to be shifted within me, talking about what I am choosing to shift within me, talking about what I'm choosing to create, talking about what I'm choosing to call in. It might look like me setting a timer on my phone, even though for me, timers work better during my follicular phase and during ovulation because timers can feel a little bit restrictive. And sometimes if I have a two minute timer, I'm going, oh my God, is the two minutes up yet? Or da 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 da. So if I'm having a moment like that, it's like throw the whole timer away and just sit and be in the energy. So I might just sit and go on a rampage from the vibration of my desire. That might look like me sitting and taking a couple deep breaths and just being like, my soulmate, my soul aligned people are showing up. The women that I have been anointed to serve and to teach are showing up. They're in love with my work. They're committed to growing and expanding. I am absolutely in love with my audience. Thank you, God, for anointing these women to be in my life. Thank you, God, for anointing me to do this work. I'm living in my purpose. I am so incredibly grateful. My heart is full of gratitude. I feel so grateful that I could absolutely cry. I'm so grateful for this overflow of love that's coming into my life. I'm so grateful for this overflow of abundance that's flowing into my life. I'm hitting my savings goals in my business. I'm hitting my personal savings goals. My investments look so amazing. Thank you, God, for all of the amazing things that are happening in my life. I'm doing it. I'm creating it. And the world is showing up for me. These women are showing up for me. And I am being deeply and completely taken care of. I am booking my flights. I am so ready to travel. I have the greatest wardrobe in the world. Blah, 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 blah. I don't know how long any of that was for. It doesn't matter. So I might just pause and talk from the vibration of my desire. I'm going to go on a rampage. I'm going to riff. I'm going to speak as if I'm living the reality of my desire, right? That's me tapping into the vibration of my desire. The thoughts that I think impact the feelings that I feel. That impacts the vibration that I emit, which impacts what attracts to me, right? It attracts thoughts, it attracts people, it attracts experiences, so on and so forth. And also, um, I don't know how much space I have. Oh, shit. Shit, shit, shit. I do not know if I have enough space for this episode, but it's really, really, really good. Um, God, angels, universe, everybody give me a second because I do not have the energy or the desire to edit um to edit this no 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 somebody load oh my god 
the website is not loading so while the website loads i'm gonna keep talking long story short i listen to myself and i listen to what i need during my luteal phase during my actual period i might be doing a lot more talking a lot more thinking i might do more of a meditation where oh i have space thank god okay so i might do a meditation where I just have the healing frequencies on and it's just me talking and connecting with God because even sometimes during this time during these phases like a meditation that's talking and telling me what to visualize and telling me what to think and all of that stuff like it just feels so constricting it doesn't feel good I get frustrated because I want to do other things my mind wants to do other things I want to think other things I need to receive other messages so my luteal phase and when my period comes it's a very spiritual time for me it's not that I don't do any work it's that the way that I do the work changes it looks different during my luteal phase I've been doing so much healing work but it's not that I've been seeking out the work it's that things have been coming up for me so it's like during that end of the follicular phase and ovulation phase I'm usually seeking out right what are the limiting beliefs that are coming up for me now what are my fears what are my worries during the luteal phase during my period it feels a lot more intuitive where these memories are coming up these feelings are coming up what are the things that I'm super sensitive around things dealing with my body image things dealing with insecurities have been coming up for me a lot lately um fears with intimacy and different things like that so it's like the stuff still comes up for me to heal it and for me to deal with it but it has it's like I still have my formula for doing things my formula for talking to my inner children my formula for taking care of myself but it looks different I'm not seeking it out it's coming to me because I'm resting when things come up to the surface I deal with them I take care of them I take care of myself but I am not going into the darkness and seeking out looking in the shadows of myself in order to find the shit no if the shit comes up I'm gonna deal with it I'm gonna love myself I'm gonna take care of myself and that's gonna be that on that so it's like not going so hard but I'm still showing up for myself when my needs come up I'm still meeting them when an inner child is triggered within me I'm meeting my needs when I'm feeling triggered in my life that means I need something from me so I'm always giving myself what it is that I need during my follicular phase during ovulation when I'm able to be locked in that's when I can sit through a workshop and I can ask myself you know I can do the journal questions and I can seek out the memories and I can do kind of like the automatic writing style to figure out what's coming up for me and where this came from and where this was started and da 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 and if you don't know how to do any of that it's in every single one of my courses so go look at those and choose the one that works best for you the point is I'm always showing up for myself, but during different times of that ovarian cycle, that looks radically different. Specifically, during my luteal phase and during my period, I am much more relaxed with myself and it just looks different. So the reason why I brought up earlier in the episode, my journal and how I have, I think it was 12 and a half pages, right? I have 12 and a half pages that I wrote in my journal. I just knew that I wanted to do some intention setting. I just knew that I wanted to do some journaling because I know that it helps me with my focus. And that's one of the things that had been coming up for me during my follicular phase and my ovulation phase. So another thing that happens a lot for me with my own menstrual cycle is that I can really take it easy and rest with my luteal phase and my period because I've done so much work and it's not really about volume but because I've been so locked in during my follicular phase and during ovulation that by the time I'm in my luteal phase and by the time I'm experiencing my period I am really just reiterating those stories, reiterating the work that I've already done throughout the month. So for this month, for this menstrual cycle, a lot of this has been my abandonment wounds, healing things around human beings and feeling like the world's going to show up for me, feeling accepted and feeling like I belong. The 
triggers that have been coming up during this past luteal phase for me. They're all things that I've already worked on. They're all things that I've already looked at. And the journaling that I did for 12.5 pages, those were all points that I had already made. They're already belief systems that I had already been building out during the follicular phase and during ovulation. So really during that luteal phase and during my period, I am just carrying out that momentum, that momentum that I've already built up I am carrying it out. I am riding the wave of the momentum that I have built out during the follicular phase and during ovulation. So I've already been telling myself the story and building out the belief system that the world wants what I have to offer. I've already been telling the story and building out the belief system that it's safe to do my work, that it's safe to relax and be taken care of and blah, 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 blah. I've already been building out the belief system that I'm a leader. So I've already been doing that work during the follicular and during ovulation. So now during the luteal phase, when I pull up my daily intention journal with the questions that I've curated for myself based on my current goals and I'm answering these questions it's kind of like I've already answered the questions before I've already you know gone over these points before so I am repeating and that's how you build out a new belief system you repeat new things that's how you learn that's how you retain information so I'm kind of repeating the same things to myself or thinking about and imagining the same scenarios to myself and familiarizing myself with the vibration of my desire. I'm not going hard. Um, there might be times where I'm expanding my comfort zone, right? If things feel challenging while I'm journaling, like that's fine. I don't run away from discomfort, but I'm not going hard. I'm not seeking out that growth and expansion. I'm not joining a new program. I'm not signing up to work with a new course, a, a new course or a new coach or different things like that. I'm not really going to a lot of new information and diving into new topics. That is not the time for me to do that. This is the time for me to ride the wave of the work that I've done throughout the month. This is the time for me to repeat these stories that I am telling myself to continue building out these beliefs that I have already decided to build out, period, okay? So that's what I would do. And let me just give you a quick summary of all of that. So I'm going to start with your luteal phase, which doesn't make sense, but it does because those are the most similar ones, right? So during my the luteal and period are the most similar. So it makes sense for me in my mind to start with the luteal. The luteal phase, which is right after ovulation, during that luteal phase, I am more relaxed. I'm listening to myself. I'm not doing a lot of things that have a lot of structure. The luteal phase of my menstrual cycle is not the time that I need to be locked in every single day. It's not the time that I'm going to commit to meditating every single morning because I'm not going to do it. I'm going to wake up the next morning and I'm going to feel like having chocolate chip pancakes and I'm going to give myself some chocolate chip pancakes because I fucking love myself. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I need during the morning. So I'm not going to commit to showing up and following a specific routine every single day during my luteal phase because for me during my luteal phase that's when I need to be as free as possible that's when I need to be as as able to go with the flow as possible during my luteal phase and especially during my period the world cannot expect anything from me and of course if you're a woman who has like children who have to meet your needs and different things like that of course that's going to look different if I was a mother and I was a well-resourced woman which we're all claiming to be then during my luteal phase and during my period phase that's when I would really have a mother's helper situation type thing going on that's when I would have more help and more support in my life and in my world because of course you want to show up for your people of course you want to show up for your children but I understand that during my luteal phase and during my period I need to be able to rest I need to be able to sleep I need to be able to nap I need to be able to chill I need to not have hardcore structure in my life. I need to go with my own flow. So it's like 
writing for me today I'm gonna journal today I didn't start off with journaling I might journal while my clothes are in the dryer I might not journal at all today I don't really give a shit I know that there are things that I like to do I like to set my intentions daily so I prioritize setting my intentions daily the intentions can be set through doing the journaling or the intentions can be set through me riffing, through me imagining, through me giving myself a couple of minutes out of the day, or me riffing while I'm loading the dishwasher. So it's like I can show up and I can still do the work and I can still move towards my goals, but I'm not going hard and I'm not forcing it. And if there's a day that I don't show up because what I needed that day was rest, then that's okay. And I'm not gonna beat myself up for it, right? So that's what I'm doing doing during my luteal phase and my period no hardcore meditations i'm probably if i'm meditating then i'm going to be sitting with healing frequencies or gospel music right music that moves me music that inspires me and i'm just going to be having a conversation with god the angels the universe the ancestors etc etc so that's what I'm doing during those phases when my period ends as my follicular phase continues and I get my energy levels back and I am more like my drive picks up I want to go out I want to get it I want to take action I want to show up that's when I'm going to be going over the workshops um, that I have access to either workshops that I've created or different programs that I'm in I'm going to be showing up for those workshops. Maybe I'm listening to an audiobook. Maybe I'm reading a book. Maybe I'm giving myself a manicure and a pedicure. I'm swimming more. I'm belly dancing. I'm singing lessons. I'm doing singing lessons. I'm roller skating. You know what I'm saying? Because I have more energy as I'm moving deeper into my follicular phase. So that's the time where I can wake up and I can do my daily intentional journaling. My daily intention journal has like 16 questions on it. I have not answered all 16 of those questions probably in the past week right there are ones that i really prioritize getting to i answered nine of the questions for my 12 and a half pages but during my follicular phase and ovulation i'll probably set a timer for one minute per question or two minutes per question so i can knock out 16 questions in 32 minutes i've just powerfully set intentions for my life for my money my finances my business and my community in 32 minutes and i'm good to go right i can do a workshop and I can do my breath work and I can do all of these things because I have so much more energy and I can show up every single day for myself during ovulation it's the same maybe kind of like on steroids depending on how I'm feeling I can really show up I can really hone in I can do the meditating every single day even though that's not really a, a goal of mine but I am at least once a day, probably in the morning, probably at the beginning of my day, focusing on what are my goals, what are my desires, what am I creating, talking to spirit, okay, these are my intentions in my business, this is what I'm creating next, this is what I'm launching next, this is what I'm focusing on next, this is what needs to happen with this, okay, let's plan some stuff out, so I'm taking more action i am showing up more i have more energy during my follicular during my ovulation phase during those two phases i'm building out new belief systems i'm going deep into my subconscious mind i am seeking out what needs to be healed i'm seeking out my limiting belief systems if you don't know how to do that grab the 12 plus free resources using the link in the bio you can get my six step process and a whole bunch of um workbooks worksheets journals eft tapping scripts it's obviously 12 plus resources so go check that out and that will help you with everything that i'm telling you here so it's like during the follicular phase during ovulation i'm seeking it out i'm hunting it down i'm doing my breath work i'm doing my journaling i am uncovering expanding empowering my mindset every single day it doesn't always take hours and hours and hours sometimes it does if that's what i need and that's what i feel but i'm showing up and i'm locking in during that luteal phase i start to wind it down that structure starts to feel really suffocating for me that structure doesn't work for me and when i did not understand that my body was moving through these different phases by that time of the month i would feel like a failure because why don't i want to meditate today why don't i want to do this today why can't i show up every single day 
day? Why can't I just be locked in? What's wrong with me? The truth is, there's nothing fucking wrong with me. I am supposed to be having this experience. I'm supposed to be feeling this way because I am a woman and this is a normal, natural part of my cycle, period. (laughs) Every single time I say period, I just feel so silly. So that's the point, okay? At that point of the month, when my energy levels start dropping and it's time to rest and relax and chill a bit, then there's a lot more flow to the routine. There are questions I know that I'd like to answer every single day. Sometimes I don't come into the, you know, office and open up my computer. I just know what I want to journal about every single day. So I'm going to do a riff or I'm going to listen to some gospel music and I'm going to pray or I'm going to lay hands on myself or I'm going to talk to God and the ancestors in the shower. But every single day of the month, I am talking about my goals. I am talking about where I'm going. I am refocusing my mind to where I want to go in my life, period. That's happening every single day. It just looks different. I need different things on different days. So during that luteal phase and during my period, when what I need is more rest, I give myself more rest and I act. I take action, which is so important. Not the action part, but what I'm about to say. It's so important that I take action when I feel moved. I don't argue with the intuition. I don't argue with the feeling. I did not know that I was going to sit here and talk for an hour long in this episode, but I felt inspired to record. And because I felt that inspiration and I felt that inkling, I took action period. So when I want to get the most out of my cycle and my energy, I'm going to take action because after I finish recording this, I might go put my clothes in the dryer and then feel super fucking pooped and need to go to bed or need to take a nap or what the hell ever. So I take action when I feel moved because my energy levels, they come to me in bursts when I'm in that luteal phase and having my period. So it's not that I have my period and I can't do anything at all, but there are times when I need to rest. But if I feel inspired on my period, I'm going to act on that inspiration and I'm going to act on it immediately. And when I'm done talking, when I'm done doing the work, when I'm done focusing on that thing, I'm going to get up and I'm going to walk away every single time. There is nothing that I'm ever forcing myself to do, period, because I trust myself. I trust my energy. I trust my inner being. I trust my myself as a divine feminine. I trust myself as a woman, as a nurturer. There's no such thing as me feeling moved to take action on something or me feeling moved to rest and that coming back to bite me in the ass because it's intuitive energy. It's psychic energy. It's me being tuned in, tapped and turned on to infinite intelligence. My inner being knows how much work I need to put in in order to reach my goal. My inner being understands the path of least resistance to get me to where I want to be. So it's a part of self trust. I trust myself to take the right action. I trust myself to make the right moves. I trust myself to show up enough. I trust myself that I have done enough. I trust God and the world to take care of me and show up for me. That's why with feminine energy, you've got to heal your relationships with people. You've got to heal your abandonment wounds. You can't be in your feminine energy if you don't trust other people to show up for you and take care of you. If you don't trust yourself to make the right choices and decisions, okay? And if you wanted to work on that specifically, then I would look inside of the love after loss course, okay? Okay, that's all that I've got for you. I hope that you enjoyed this episode. I hope that it powerfully supported you and shifted a million things in you. Please comment down below. Let me know. I love reading your feedback. Shout out to whoever you are in Brazil. I'm sending you so much love and I read your comment and it was so amazing and so beautiful and so wonderful, but I have not had the energy to respond yet. So I haven't, but I see you and I will respond and I love you so much. And thank you for requesting this kind of video. I know that your request and I think what I was talking about in the last one was more like spiritual context, but this is what I felt to share and talk about today. So I hope that you enjoy it and I hope that you tuned in and to everyone else, I love you so much and I will talk to you on Thursday. Okay, bye.